Hi, my name is Kevin Martin. I'm here with you from the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. Thanks for joining us on our weekly podcast update. Uh, we're shooting this a little bit ahead of time, but we should be at about 1,400 growing degree days when you see this on the 7th of August. That's actually a little bit late for us. The 14, base 1,400 for berry moth usually happens a little bit earlier in August. So that, all that means for you is right now you should be scouting. Uh, whether or not you need to spray or not, that's going to happen a little bit later. You can check the newer models to see when you need to do that. Uh, I'm just here to sort of remind you of how we manage Niagara's differentially. Uh, and when you're scouting your Niagara's for grape berry moth, you want to be really careful that you do a good job scouting and you're a little bit more aggressive in your reaction. Uh, so that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the thresholds are wrong. Uh, it just means when you start to meet and exceed those thresholds, it would be my recommendation from a business perspective. If you plan on reaching higher bricks with those Niagara's that you use more expensive materials and or consider double bracketing your sprays. So in a normal year, uh, over the past five or six years, almost universally, if we're seeing Niagara's reach 14 or 15 bricks, uh, we're having an extra generation of berry moth. In very high risk sites, I would al almost always recommend double bracketing that spray. And what that means is you'd use two insecticides for a single generation to try to hit both ends of the spectrum in terms of the ones that emerge early and the ones that emerge late. And a cost for that is going to be in the neighborhood of 50 to $60 per acre as opposed to not doing anything at all. Um, and the reason for that is not necessarily the berry moth damage. Um, which is bad enough in those high-risk sites, but the secondary rots and the uh, botrytis-type rots that happen because of the berry moth damage in Niagara when it reaches those higher bricks. Uh, in those conditions, we were in uh, a research trial that I was involved in. Uh, we were unable to control the damage in an economic way. So it was always better to just harvest earlier. But if your market doesn't allow you to harvest earlier at lower bricks, an alternative was to have a much more robust berry moth spray program. And it wasn't necessarily a better outcome, but it was certainly better than doing less or nothing. Uh, this year, conditions are actually a little bit better. Uh, berry moth will be less... Uh, berry moth will come later, so there won't be that extra generation. And um, the timing is a little bit better in terms of sometimes it gets lost when, when this generation happens early. Uh, it gets lost in other management practices. Uh, we should have time to do some really good control if you need to do control uh, in mid-August. Uh, the other thing is that we are seeing some really large crops. So hopefully what that means is it's easier to justify these sprays where, when you need them. And it may also mean that Niagara bricks are lower. We don't see a lot of thinning that takes place in Niagara. They're very, a very difficult variety to thin. So if you're around 12, 12 and a half bricks, that's going to decrease your susceptibility to those secondary rots and you'll have more crop. And that may even happen, you know, 12, 13, 14 bricks. That may even happen if uh, you participate in a late season program, depending on the timing of that program. So certainly if, if you're harvesting towards the end of October, you're going to see some high bricks. Uh, I don't know that any processor is considering that, but, but check with your processor. Uh, if you're harvesting before Concord, I anticipate most Niagara varieties will see low bricks, and this will be less of a concern. And if that is the case, if that is your market, and you, you are more concerned about reaching 12 bricks than you are concerned with um, harvesting late and keeping your fruit very, very clean, uh, you probably can treat your Niagara's only slightly more, ro slightly more intensively than your Concords. And the only reason you do that with low bricks uh, Niagara is because it's easier to find berry moth in an, in an inspection. So that being said, just understand your market and if your market does require some of these things like higher bricks or later harvests, um, we probably have the ability to do a good job of controlling it because we do, we're not going to have that extra generation. Uh, but just make sure you scout carefully uh, because the, targeting this generation in those areas uh, would be very important if there's a moderate to severe risk of berry moth pressure. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, please comment down below or give us a call.